Because sometimes if you're just having a lot of trouble and something that's ever so basic just doesn't work, it's better just to start over. Okay, so again, I'm going to call that the building height. I'm going to call that the building width or the depth. And then for this one here, I'm going to turn that one on and try reassociating those parameters. And finally, over here, building height. Let's check it out to see if we can sort of work with those now. Let me uh, take a look at the parameters. There they all are. So the height was 80 we wanted. That looks good. The building depth was 60 I wanted. OK, and the width is 140. Okay, it's flexing in all three dimensions. So don't know what the problem was, but my solution was just going to take out the mass and recreate it. I am betting that there's something that I did along the way that just gave it a little bit of a tweak that got it off plane. Because even when I put the dimensions in there, it didn't look like it was quite going vertically. It was just sort of out of kilter, just a hair. But let's say that's OK now. So I got one mass. I can finish that mass. Let me kind of shade it again so you can take a look at it. That mass now can be deformed. If you have set up parameters, you will see that when you choose the mass, when you've closed the mass and you choose it, it actually has the parameters kind of hanging right out here in the type palette. So you can go through and just uh, start adjusting it there. Actually, I should warn you about this. I tend to like to keep the properties palette over here. You're probably looking at the properties palette over there. Can't even get it back to there where I want it anymore. <laughs> Down at the bottom. Well, this is going to fight me. I tend to pull it <laughs> over to here just because I like it on that side. But it's really, it's up to you. It's kind of really wherever you prefer to look at it. That's, in fact, one of the few changes. That's one of the things you'll notice the most as you move from Revit 2010 to 2012 is that this property palette stays open all the time. So when you're looking at instance or type properties, as opposed to having to like dive in and say element properties, they stay visible all the time. And after you get used to that, it becomes really, really handy just to have that around. So you don't have to keep on saying element properties. OK, so you got a mass. You can flex it there. Go ahead and let's make your mass. Um, I'm not going to care precisely what size you make it. You just have to sort of remember the volume that you're creating, because you're going to have to be able to create that volume in the other direction, okay? or an equivalent volume using something different. Okay, So I'm going to make it really easy for myself. I'm going to say that it's. 200 by 100 by 50, Okay, which is a nice, is it a million square feet? A cubic feet, OK, 700,000 square feet. Uh, depth, height, oops, I went the wrong way. I wanted the height to be 50. And actually, I'll just make it 50 by 50, kind of like that. The reason I'm going to do that, that's going to be really easy for me to change in the other direction to say 50, 50 by 200, as opposed to 200 by 50 by 50. OK, so that's one building. Let's go ahead and say that one's looking good. Now, you've gone through and you've created this fantastic form that's controllable with parameters in this low, flat sort of profile. What if I wanted to create sort of a rectangular box that was tall and skinny instead of low and flat? Okay. And you can do it with other forms, too, but I'm just going to make it easy. What I can do is say, you know, this box here, which is sitting around in option one, I love that so much. What I'd really like to do is just copy it to my clipboard. Because when I copy it to my clipboard, I'm going to be able to kind of paste it into another design option and change its parameters and have another option to look at very, very quickly. Okay, so. Let's see what we got to do here. I've copied it. I've put it on the clipboard. Okay. I 
am done in this design option, I can go back to main model and admire my work. Isn't that lovely? Or I can go over to the other design alter alternative and paste it in there and start messing around with it on that side too. So what I'm going to do is go switching over to tall and skinny, which is currently sitting there looking oh so empty. It's just waiting to have a building dropped on it. I'm going to say paste. I'm going to align it to the same place. Aligning to the same place just says take that very same object that you copied over here and just put it right back in exactly the same place. It's a little bit different though because we're in a different design option. It's kind of like having alternate realities. Okay, it's existing over in that other dimension if you're a sci-fi fan. So it's going to be in that parallel universe. Okay, and there it is. Now this one, which is sitting here in my parallel tall and skinny universe, is independent of the one that's sitting over there in flat and low. Okay? So I can go through and change its parameters, and it won't affect the other one. <coughs> They're really two different objects. So for this one, in tall and skinny land, I'll say that I want it to be 50 by 50 by 200. Be a little bit tall for the campus, and say apply. Oops. I keep on making that change. It's 200 there and 50 there. OK. So I've created a tower of a different shape. Now, these two parallel universes really are independent of each other because flat and low looks like this, and tall and skinny looks like this. Now, I've put it there. I'm going to sort of move it around a little bit just so it's in a better location. Kind of back over here to the center of the site. But so there's my one universe. Here's my other one. Okay, just two different ways of looking at it. Okay, so I got these two different like uh, parallel things to look at. Let's go ahead and try creating a third one. We're good so far with those two. Okay, let's go ahead and try creating a third one. The volume of this thing, just so we know, or the, uh, what is it, the, uh, we haven't even divided it into floor area. The volume of it is somewhere around, what is it, 500,000. So we're going to go ahead and try and create another volume with around 500,000. But for this one, I want you to be a little bit freeform. Just try, let's try creating something and see if you can get it around 500,000. But go ahead and be creative for this one. You can make it a pyramid, you can make it a circle, you can make it a cylinder, whatever you want to make it. But go through and come on over to. I'll call it the pyramid world, because that's what I thought I would do. Let's uh, sort of draw something in this world. Okay, So to draw a pyramid, let me go to the top. It'll be a little bit easier to do it that way. A pyramid I will do just by doing a blend. I'll do a blend between like a big uh, rectangle down on the ground and a rectangle higher up. And I can maybe stretch it a little bit taller if I need to be. So for that blend, what I can do is, again, I'm in this uh, pyramid design option. I'll say create a mass. I'll draw a big old rectangle on level one. Kay. Now I want to go up and draw another rectangle, but instead of being on level one, I want to be on level five. I'm just going to put it up a little higher. And let me go to 3D and see if I can get this to work now, or switch over to a different orientation. What I want to do is actually take those two different rectangles. This one up here, I'm going to tab to grab it. And I grab this one down here, tab and control click to grab it. Let's see if I can create a form out of these things. It looks like it did. So this is sort of like what we were doing the other day. A blend is just really taking two different profiles and making a form out of them. So let me kind of do that again slowly, just so you, uh, you, know, yeah, you see that no, my, my, my fingers never left my hands, something like that. OK, let's say Control Z. OK, what I was going to do is as follows. OK, down at the lowest level, in fact, I'll even get rid of that one just so we can start over again. Down on the lowest level, what I'm going to do, actually, I think, um, yeah. Take something, I'm going to place it at level one. It could be a rectangle or it could be some other shape if you want. Okay. 
that's one surface. I'm now going to go up to level, actually I can get out of there. So I'm going to draw another one. So I'm going to put it at a higher level. And the reason is I'm just trying to draw on two different elevations so that they're not coplanar. I want them to be sort of two different elevations so that one's floating above the other. And now with these two things, they're a little hard to tell there that one's above the other, but let me orbit it and see if we can see. There it is. You might see it better now. Now I can grab one of the profiles by tabbing and select it. Then I'll grab the other profile by tabbing, and I'm going to control click so that I can get them both. It's, I have to control click to get the second one as opposed to switching to it. Say create a solid form. I'll get a rectangle out of that or a pyramid out of that. Okay, now that may not quite be how big we want it to be yet, so I can stretch it up if I want to. And what I'm going to do is actually, I'll finish this mass, then we'll take a look at how much volume we've created, and we might need to adjust that mass to kind of make it about the same if we really want a fair comparison. So how are we doing in terms of creating our third shape? You got a third shape? Okay, what do I got over here? This one's a lot bigger. It's about twice as big as the other ones right now. So I'm just going to squash the top of it down. About 534, <coughs> 510, something like that. Okay. That's something that may be somewhat similar. Okay. Yes? Uh, yes? Yeah, you say create form. And it should work. Actually, I should be, you know, fess up to something with you guys. When you're doing something like this, let me kind of show you one other kind of little nuance to it that will make it right, because I want you to sort of actually know the right technique. Let me take that one out. When I'm going through and creating these things, let me uh, do it back again in the top. There is a small difference between, let me say, uh, create a mass. If I'm going to make these two different profiles and bring them together, I actually should turn this one off, because what ended up happening is I not only created the solid pyramid, but I actually had a plane on the bottom and a plane on the top. So I had some excess geometry kind of floating around in there. What I should do is turn them off and just let them be profiles, and then join that into a solid. And then you won't have that excess. That's why it complained to me when I sort of said finish the mass. So if I turn off making a surface, I'll just get profiles. And I'll do the other one at level 5. This will just be a little bit neater. Okay, again, I'll switch back over so I can just sort of see a little bit better. The which tab? These tabs? Yeah. Are you looking at the modify tab? Uh, um, when I, I, I click place mass. Yes. And oh, well, place mass is a little bit different. There's create a mass, which will let you draw a new one. Place the mass says that you're actually going to go out and grab a mass family from uh, the <coughs> library. So create mass doesn't come up with the level with it underneath the, the yellow, the, the blue thing? It's when you say create mass and you choose a drawing tool, will it show up then? Oh, yeah, it does. OK, so it's, it's sort of specific. Okay. No worries. Okay. So let me go ahead and choose that one. And again, I'll choose this one down here, control clicking it there. I'll create the form. OK, this time it won't complain to me. So that's a subtle distinction between whether you want to close the surface or don't want to close the surface. But in general, if you're going to be doing something that's a little more complex, leave the surface open and don't have it create the surface. Go ahead and like, uh, you know, do that as part of your form creation, as opposed to having it create that surface. It won't impact your analysis a whole lot, but it will make a small difference. OK, here we are. That pyramid's a little squashy now, so let me try and stretch it up. And as I'm stretch, ooh, 501. Not too bad. I'm going to make it even a little bit taller, because I'm going to lose a lot of floor space because of this funny pyramid shape. OK, so I got a pyramid. I got tall and skinny. I've got low and flat. Okay, three different options to kind of work with. So far, so good? 
If you're so far so good, save, save before you go any further so that in case anything happens over the break, you don't get yourself in trouble. And let's take a look at one other variation on this thing. There's the whole notion of, okay, we're looking at these different options just to really drive home the notion of the design options. Let's go back to the main model. Okay, There's low and flat. It's sitting around inside the main model. Okay, If I wanted to have tall and skinny show up in the main model, okay, how would we do that? And the key is the one that always shows up in the main model is whatever one is currently designated as primary. So, if you're interested in having something else be your primary, we can click on, it's either the button over here, or it's under the Manage tab, either one, no, it's not Manage, then Analyze, excuse me, <coughs> Design Options here, same button, really. We can say that instead of low and flat being primary, make tall and skinny primary. And if we do, then it'll get swapped into the main model instead. So you always have the option of just sort of, you can change your leading candidate as many times between now and the election as you want. OK, that's OK. And every debate might change your mind just a little bit. So go ahead and feel free to do that. OK, beautiful. Let's go ahead and we will stop right there, take our like five minute break now. And when we come on back, we'll figure out how to use all these different shapes to actually do some energy analysis and some solar analysis and all that fun stuff because this was just creating the form. We need to get some feedback to figure out which of these forms we really like. <laughs>